my tenure in office 2015 to date with particular regard to the recovered assets, taking into consideration that the 2002, which is an area indeed being considered by the committee, and up to the point of 2015, I was not in office, and I may not be in a sound position to give a comprehensive rundown as to that area. But one thing that I think is important before coming down to figures is the fact that um, as, at the time we came into office, we realized that there was no coordinated, organized way and manner through which recovered assets were being coordinated in terms of disposal and associated things. So what we did was indeed to put in place a legal framework to consider the possibility of having a legal framework and developed a proceeds of crime bill which was transmitted by the executive to the National Assembly uh, as far back as 2017. Embedded in the process of crime bill was the Asset Management and Recovery Agency. And uh, I regret to state that as far back as 2017 to 2019, up to the present moment, that legislative framework could not be achieved on account of the fact that the asset recovery proceeds of crime bill was not passed by the National Assembly. As I'm talking to you, it has been a work in progress. So my take on it is, if indeed the National Assembly had passed the proceeds of crime bill, we cannot be here scampering and indeed perhaps scouting for information relating to the recovered assets because that bill has indeed put in place an effective mechanism both in terms of database, in terms of disposal processes and procedure. So the starting point is to state that there has been inaction, inaction on the part of the National Assembly with particular regards to the co having in place a coordinated legal framework on assets, tracing, disposal, and management. Now, coming to the recovered assets. Let me state that at the national level in terms of recovery, notwithstanding the absence of the proceeds of crime act, or perhaps the passage of the proceeds of crime bill, we have tried to record some modest achievements in terms of our international engagement as far as recoveries are concerned. In that respect, we have succeeded in December 2017 to recover 322 million US dollars from Swiss. That asset recovered is known as Abachatu. Again, in 2020, precisely in May 2020, we have succeeded in recovering 311 million 797,866.11 cent from, from Island of Jersey, United States of America, and indeed UK. And we have equally, in December, in October 2020, recovered 5 million 494, 743.71 uh, euro from Republic of Northern Ireland in Nigeria, known as Abachafo. And of recent, we have succeeded in May 2021 in recovering the sum of 4,214,017,00 pounds from UK, known as Ibori Loot. And all these assets as recovered are indeed lodged with the central bank account on asset recovery and uh, the receipts of the amount has been confirmed 
by the central bank. But let me state that recovered asset has indeed constituted an item, budgetary item that has been appropriated by the National Assembly and among the monies for or perhaps asset expected to fund the national budget of the federal government has by as a matter of policy been made part of the budgetary arrangement of the federal government and it was indeed among the expected items appropriated by the I mean through the appropriation by the National Assembly. So the implication of what I'm laboring to state is that these recovered assets and much more that were being recovered locally constituted a budget line item. And these monies are open recovery and lodgement with the central bank account on asset recovery are eventually transmitted to consolidated revenue fund for ex I mean for utilization by the federal government in um, servicing the budget demands of the federal government. Of course, let me state further that um, on account of the fact that Nigeria as a sovereign nation is not exclusively involved where international recoveries are concerned, it calls for mutual negotiations and determination. For example, when we are negotiating the 311, 322 million US dollars originally recovered in, 20, in December 2017, arising from the fact that we were governed not exclusively by the Nigerian law, but by international convention relating to international recovery, taking into consideration that Swiss, Switzerland as a sovereign nation was involved and negotiations were necessary. We had to sit down, discuss, agree, and negotiate with Swiss, governed by international conventions, our local laws, their local laws, among others, to agree on an arrangement that has to do with the disposal, or perhaps uh, uh, with the disposal of the assets in contention. And we agreed on social investment programs, among others. Now, which social investment programs are we talking about? The Empower program, Trader Money program, and associated uh, school feeding program, and associated incidental programs of the federal government relating to support for the less privileged and indeed the indigent and disabled. It was commonly agreed among these nations that these monies should be extended in that respect, and the money was indeed accordingly applied. Now, coming into the, uh, coming to the second tranche, which was uh, 311 million US dollars recovered from Island of Jersey, United States of America, and uh, UK, we equally negotiated on the projects in respect of which these monies were to be applied, and arriving from the international negotiations among sovereign nations guided by the international conventions relating to the asset recoveries. It was agreed that these funds be applied on three major Nigerian projects. That is Abuja Kano Expressway, which I am happy to state that is progressing modestly in terms of uh, infrastructural development. Uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, which is as well been aggressively pursued, and it did second Niger Bridge. All these were budgetary items, and uh, there was budgetary provision for them. And then indeed, the, idea, the budget item relating to, the budget item, item relating to this project was there in the budget and appropriated by the National Assembly. So these funds were agreed to be applied exclusively for this project and I'm happy to report that this is what is being transparently and uh, accountably done by the federal government in terms of the uh, in terms of application again 
we have recently, we have equally recovered from Republic of Northern Ireland um, the, sum of, um, we, uh, the sum of 5 million euro uh, on 2nd October 2020, which amount was equally remitted to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. So by and large, as far as the government of President Muhammad Buhari is concerned, recovered assets are substantially products of international agreement, international, um, uh, international agreement and understanding, and on the basis of that understanding as agreed, the recovered assets are factored as a, as a budgetary item in our national budget, trust by the National Assembly. So what I'm saying in essence is indeed a tripartite cycle of the executive, the legislature, and international negotiations as far as the internationally recovered assets are concerned. So the executive factor it, factor the recoveries as a budgetary item in the budget. The legislature fast it on as a budgetary item, approve it, and indeed the executive deploy it same in, as agreed in the budget, and the international community is carried along in terms of the project that needs to be, I mean, for which the funds need to be applied, and we have been wholeheartedly operating within that cycle as far as for the purpose of sustenance of transparency and accountability. Now, coming to the local